Since their departure from Bern, Luke had used only side roads, driving a distance, finding a place to lie up while his pursuers, if they existed, went ahead of him. They were talking Russian in low voices like a pair of fugitives. Why are we keeping our voices down? Luke wondered. But they were. At the edge of a pine forest he again parked, and this time handed Dima a laborer's blue tunic and a thick black woolen ski cap to cover his bald head. For himself he had brought jeans, anorak, a bobble hat. They found the bastards, Dima growled in a Russian undertone, translating from the Swiss news on the car radio. Two drunk Russian assholes at a fight at the Bellevue Palace Hotel, nobody know why. One guy's in hospital. Russian ambassadors pissed off. At the men? At the Swiss. Wanna know how it works? Russian ambassador called a Kremlin. Who are these crazy fucks? Kremlin called the bitch prince. What the fuck are you assholes doing beating the shit out of each other in a fancy hotel in Bern, Switzerland? And the prince says? Emilio, my friend, my wise advisor. What the fuck are my two nice guys doing beating the shit out of each other in a fancy hotel in Bern? And Emilio says? Emilio say that shithead Dima, world number one money launderer, has disappeared off the fucking planet. No great intriguer himself, Luke was doing his sums. First the two so-called Arab policemen in Paris, who sent them, why? Then the two bodyguards at the Bellevue Palace Hotel. Why had they come to the hotel after the signing? Who sent them? Why? Who knew how much? When? Luke called Ollie. All quiet, Harry. Dick, or two stragglers, clocked in just a couple of minutes back, you'll be pleased to hear. Tenish over the other side of the hill about right for you. Nice and dark by then. Ten o'clock is fine. Grunt Station car park. A nice little red Suzuki. I'll be first right as you drive in and as far from the trains as we can get then. Reaching the village of Tsvailuchinen, Luke took the left fork that led by a winding river road to the edge of Grindelwald. The Grunt Station car park was packed with the abandoned cars of German tourists. Entering it, Luke saw to his relief the figure of Ollie in a quilted anorak and peaked cap with ear flaps, seated at the wheel of a stationary red Suzuki jeep with its lights on. And here's your rug for when it gets nippy, Ollie told Dima. And to Luke, the forest track is forbidden, but not for locals with business to do, like plumbers and railway workers and such. So if it's all the same to you, I'll do any talking. Not that I'm a local, but the jeep is, and its owner told me what to say. They passed a settlement of low chalets and bright lights. Wood smoke mingled with the smell of pine. A fluorescent sign, red Brundig. The road became an unmade forest track. The air turned thinner and colder. Luke's breath came faster. An icy film of dew was forming on his cheeks and brow. They had passed the tree line and again broken free. Light cloud covered a starry sky. You been to Ural Mountain, Stick? Dima yelled at Luke in English, swinging round. Luke nodded vigorously and smiled, yes. Like Perm, like Perm in the Russia. We got mountains like this. They began their descent. To their left, bathed in moonlight, rose the sinewy blue-black shadows of the Eiger Glacier. Far away across the valley, they glimpsed the lights of Murren, and now and then, through the density of the forest as it took them back, the fickle lights of Wengen.